So picture this, it's September 2005 and Blizzard has just dropped a brand new update for your favourite game, World of Warcraft. They introduced a new 20 man raid called Zul'Garub and the final boss of this raid is called Hakar the Soul Flayer, a giant horrifying blood god. I mean just look at this guy, look at him. You're really hyped up for the raid. You and your raiding party have geared up and you start clearing the raid. You eventually get to the final boss, Hakar, and you manage to kill him after dozens and dozens of attempts. You pick up all of the high level loot you dropped and you head back to Ironforge to start banking it all. But then suddenly, all of the low level players nearby just start dropping dead for seemingly no reason. Everyone starts freaking out, the in-game chat explodes with all caps text, and piles of bones start appearing beneath all of the bodies of the low-level players. For the next week, nobody could go into any major cities. Low levels would instantly die, and high-level players would instantly begin taking heavy damage. Well, what just happened? Well, let's go back to the final boss of the raid for a second to find out. Hakar the Soul Flayer had a debuff called Corrupted Blood, if the boss gave you this debuff, you'd take damage once every 2 seconds, but the debuff only lasted for 10 seconds. The kicker though, is that this debuff would spread between nearby allies, so any nearby allies would become infected if they came too close to someone who had the debuff on them. Part of Hakar's boss fight was that you were supposed to coordinate with your raid and spread out when someone got infected to make sure that the debuff didn't wipe the entire raid. When someone got infected, everyone needed to talk to each other to make sure that everyone spread out. Hakar's boss fight was designed so that the debuff couldn't be taken out of the arena that the boss was fought in. The raid took place in a very secluded location far away from any of the other cities, so once Hakar died, the corrupted blood would eventually wear off and it wouldn't be able to be taken out of the raid. Except, it could be taken out of the raid. There was an oversight with the way corrupted blood functioned. Players with pets could take corrupted blood into major cities, both intentionally or unintentionally. Pets could catch the Corrupted Blood debuff. If you dismissed your pet while it still had the debuff, it would keep that debuff indefinitely until resummoned. When you decided to resummon your pet in, I don't know, the middle of Ironforge, then suddenly your pet infects you and all of the nearby players with Corrupted Blood. Then catastrophe ensues, with people dropping like flies left and right and no one really understands why. It's likely that the first case of this happening was by accident, but nobody really knows for sure. But of course, once the bug was discovered, players on every major server started intentionally infecting all of the major cities with corrupted blood. At first, everyone just freaked out. There were people panicking and they didn't know what to do. Blizzard told players to avoid going into densely populated zones and to try and avoid contact with other players. But as you can imagine, everyone just ignored that advice until it was far too late. A lot of people just logged off and waited for Blizzard to come along and fix the pandemic for them but it didn't take long for people to start taking matters into their own hands. Without being prompted by anyone, people just started setting up quarantine zones. People playing as priests acted as doctors, healing the sick to allow them to survive long enough for the disease to wear off. Low level players weren't able to survive long enough to help the infected, so they began guarding the perimeter of cities, telling everyone who came near to stay away or get inside a quarantine zone. High level players who weren't acting as doctors were instead acting as scouts. They'd run into infected areas to try and figure out what caused the plague to start, or if anything was keeping it alive. These scouts soon figured out that NPCs could become infected with the disease, but it couldn't kill them. Normal NPCs in cities can't die, so they acted like asymptomatic carriers of the disease who would hold on to it indefinitely. Most players wouldn't notice that the NPC was infected until they'd gotten much too close and become infected themselves. A disease in real life that was as deadly as Corrupted Blood was, would have burned through a population extremely quickly, just killing all potential victims and running out of new people to infect, like a fire running out of fuel. But because players indefinitely respawn after death, and because NPCs could carry the disease without dying, the disease wouldn't fade away on its own. The players who were setting up quarantines and acting as virtual doctors, they represent the good guys, but just like in real life, there were people who, for one reason or another, just wanted to watch the world burn. Players started setting up groups of people who would hide in the mountains and periodically come in to break quarantine zones on purpose to try and kill people inside. They would reinfect any NPCs that had lost the debuff, and they'd make sure that this natural disaster lasted as long as possible. 
In real life, these people would be labelled as bioterrorist organisations. Funnily enough, the behaviour of the players in this virtual outbreak turned out to be a valuable insight into how people might behave in a real-life pandemic scenario. Epidemiologists found that the Corrupted Blood incident was actually a fairly accurate simulation of what a real-life pandemic might be like, because it allowed them to have an accurate model of what real people may or may not do during such a crisis. World of Warcraft might not actually be real life, but it is thought that the reactions players had to the outbreak would likely not be too different from what they would do in real life in an epidemic. Real life epidemics are extremely rare, and pandemics are even more rare, so epidemiologists don't have very much real world data to go off when trying to analyse how diseases spread, and how human behaviour can help or hinder efforts to control the growth of the disease. Epidemiologists rely heavily on simulations of outbreak scenarios, but having real people react in real time to a disease spreading is generally much more reliable than any simulation could possibly be. The corrupted blood outbreak allowed scientists to analyse real people's behaviour without anybody really getting hurt. Because believe it or not, the corrupted blood incident very closely mirrors similar real world outbreaks. Epidemiologists at the time compared the Corrupted Blood incident with the avian flu outbreak of 1997, but just to keep this video topical, let's quickly compare it to the outbreak that's going on right now, the COVID-19 pandemic. Both were unintentionally spread by animals. COVID-19 spread from animals being bought and sold in wet markets, Corrupted Blood latched onto in-game pets. Authorities called for people to quarantine themselves, but those calls for isolation were very widely ignored until it was far too late. Both were spread by spatial contact, which is being in close contact with infected individuals. And in both outbreaks, there are asymptomatic individuals who can make the disease spread much faster without people even realising it. In the corrupted blood incident, there were NPCs who were asymptomatic carriers who couldn't die of the disease, and with COVID-19, some people don't show symptoms while infected for the first 14 days. It is unknown if there are any carriers of COVID-19 at the time of writing, but there could still be people who don't show symptoms at all, but can still infect others. It might seem a little bit minimising to compare the very real and very serious pandemic that we're currently experiencing to an incident in a video game in the mid-2000s, but these similarities are extremely important. These similarities make it very good at modelling the real world and the mechanisms that viruses use to spread across the globe. Despite it just being a video game, it's not all that trivial to make these connections, because any help we can get at combating the spread of a disease, large or small, is extremely valuable, and it will save immeasurable numbers of people's lives in the future. So how did Blizzard fix it? Well, in the end, they had to shut down every server in the entire game just to get the disease to stop. But Blizzard can't shut down every server without first figuring out what caused the outbreak in the first place, otherwise it would just start all over again. So the entire game was left in this pandemic state for an entire week before they reset the servers. Unfortunately, you can't solve real pandemics in the real world by just turning the universe off and on again, so I think everyone's going to have to continue to stay inside for the time being. The outbreak was completely unintentional, but in the first day, Blizzard were applauded for their genius marketing strategy for their new raid. Though Blizzard did intentionally try and create an outbreak in the game in the future, Blizzard created an artificial zombie plague to hype up the wrath of the Lich King. It was exciting, but it didn't have the same magic as the Corrupted Blood incident, because it wasn't accidental, it was put in the game on purpose, and that sort of ruined the magic for everybody. Hakkar's Corrupted Blood Plague was an extremely unique event in video game history, and nothing quite like it has happened since, no matter how hard developers try to match the excitement it caused. Hopefully the information epidemiologists gathered from studying this event could save lives in these strange times that we're currently living in. Thanks for watching.